Hey guys, today we are going to talk about eight cards that have gone up a lot in price. We will start with the first one, which is very good with another card. Enchant player, at the beginning of each end step, Enchanted player puts the top X cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard, where X is the number of cards put into the graveyard from anywhere this turn. It has a good combo. It's kind of a glass cannon type of combo, but nonetheless, people like it. It has gone up from bulk to $6. The foil is $8, so there's not much of a gap between the foil and the non-foil. Uh, it's a $2 gap is not much at all. It's not even a multiplier of two. So it's interesting to see this card being played. Uh, sometimes when people brew new decks, uh, the cards that are in the decks go up in price. Um, it's not only this card, it's also Frexion on Life would be one which I've seen a deck about it. And it was a budget deck, it seemed like a lot of fun. People went out to buy the deck and it spiked the card. Overall, this is a very, very strong card with that combo, but it's not... I don't know if it's going to be standard meta defining. So Fraction on Life, there was a video from Saffron Olive who makes the budget. I'm pretty sure it was from Saffron Olive who makes the budget decks. And this was the quote unquote budget card. It saw lots of play and people watched it. They liked it. They went out to buy it. Uh, this card was the definition of bulk. You can see the chart is very low, probably under 25 cents to be quite honest. I have a story where Star City Games sold a lot of these to as uh, their bulk collection. So whenever you bought like a bulk collection, they would throw in a few hundred copies of this uh, just randomly. Uh, now it looks very good. It is a $10, $10 card. If you got it for 10 cents, which I think was the price of the card at the time that you could have bought it at and bought any number of copies would have been fantastic. It would have been the most epic speculation ever just because of the quantities Star City Games had of this card. They had a ton of this card because no one wanted to buy it. No one wanted, no one wanted to buy it. They all wanted to sell it. So they accumulated a ton. And they were trying to dump it. Well, it's a $10 card now. Next, uh, Startled Awake. So this is kind of the standard-esque combo with the first card that we saw. So you dump 13 cards, and then you dump another 13 cards, and they're down to 26, and then you can continue to dump. They're not going to have that many cards in your library left. It's good. Um, it's very good because it curves correctly. Um, it's two in a blue, and then two in double blue, so you're curving in uh, with what, and your opponent's drawing cards in your hand as well they're drawing a card for each turn overall a fantastic combo and standard it is something that people who want to mill really want want they this is their ideal mill decks typically are not playable and standard due to the lack of just the lack of quantity not the quality quality sometimes is extremely high but startled awake is an interesting card and it has been going up due to that combo the first card that we talked about it's in color, on curve, and why not? It's just a very, very good combo. Now, talking about meta defining, we are going into a period where we will probably see more aggro decks than typical, and this is why this card is so good. Uh, it has been rising in price. One of the interesting parts about the whole Hour of Devastation, the prices are ticking up. So typically, you don't really see that. Um, no, normally, prices are the highest, especially for Mythics, during the pre-release or during the pre-hype period where pre people are buying them pre-order. But here, we've seen a lot of the cards actually go up in price, not just the 5%, but we probably see, I would guess, 60% of all Mythics have gone up in price, uh, some significantly, as we will talk about other ones in this video. But quite interesting, even the non-super good ones, I think, are going or seeing some type of play. This one, I'm not entirely, I'm not sure why you wouldn't just play the dragon over this. Maybe you play the dragon with this card. 
and it does add a lot of red to your mana pool for every one life your opponent has lost this turn so if you have multiple creatures with a flicked it's good it's got a good body i don't know i i like gold castigator angel i don't know remember the exact card's name but that was a mythic that i thought was going to be very good but it turned out to be very bad all right the big winner in our devastation in terms of the money not as a percentage is the scarab god this card is beginning to see play it's very good i never doubted that it was good the one thing i doubted was whether or not it would have a deck it seems to have a deck uh, it's a control card it is something that gives you a lot of um, card quality control as well as you can create you can create zombies right you can create rather big zombies to help you and, and block and that's always very good the block or attack scrying is always nice your opponent losing life is always nice and it's a 5-5 five, five to boot uh, also if it dies you get it back in your hand which is you know okay i mean it's okay it has a lot of abilities a lot of unique abilities uh, in conjunction with each other as well as just being a good card a very strong card i don't know if it will be meta defining but right now it is on the move and it's something that you should keep your eyes out because it will be harder and harder to get now the torment of hailfire is the interesting card where x double black repeat the process x times each opponent loses free life unless that player sacrifices a non-line permanent or discards a card if you can get the X big enough, you're just going to win the game straight out due to resources. Resource denial is very big. Um, X, so let's take one in double black. Your opponent is probably just going to lose free life and that would be it. Two in double black, your opponent is likely to discard maybe two cards. Um, that would seem very good um, because like discarding two cards, mana rot, I think it's two in a black or yeah two in a black and you discard two you're paying more than that just to get two cards uh, what actually really happens quite in ed8 is it's each opponent so unlike mine rot which would hit only one opponent this is going to hit multiple opponents and deny multiple resources and ed 8s mana acceleration is very easy and not at all difficult to accomplish. So I think this card's going up due to EDH. I can't really see it being good in one versus one, but in EDH you get so much value. The biggest winner, of course, is our Devastation, which is a huge board sweeper, right? It is the Reds version of Damnation. And hitting five hits pretty much most relevant cards and hitting Planeswalkers is always very good. Uh, planeswalkers can survive most of the times board wipe especially something like damnation or the white versions of that this gets them uh, it gets them it doesn't allow them especially gideon to continue to pump out tokens could i imagine it would be an eight dollar card no uh, this seems very aggressive in terms of price but i can see it i mean i can see it because it is one of the most dominant cards red is always very good when it first begins um, it is something that is very aggro and something that resets your board so you can play something bigger your next turn i like it board removal has always been one of the staples in red this is just a more damage right you're paying five but you get the five damage and you also get the planeswalker to boot I don't know people are going to play nickel bullets uh they are going to try him out and even casually f and m and that's enough to go to make its price quite valuable now let's talk about this card this card will be a modern staple uh it I'd probably will be ed8 staple as well i'm not sure about legacy i don't really play legacy that much anymore but i know it's a modern staple because if you look at the regular card and you look at the foil card it's a multiplier of more let's call it three and a half right that's a huge multiplier for a card so whenever you see a multiplier like that that probably indicates that yes people are picking up the foils first for their 
modern decks or their ed8 decks and then eventually the card will catch up um, standard cards don't typically have that big of a multiplier uh, one of the other cards you can look at is Fatal Push, although Fatal Push now has a promo, so it's probably not the best example. There's that just not many cards that can be played in modern that when they come out, you know this is a modern card. This is one of them. Uh, the foil is extremely valuable, and I don't see it going down in price. I do see the regular copy being more expensive. It's a matter of whether or not you can trade into these and not buy them, because trading into them and holding will be very good this is the card uh, this is the card that will have value after rotation anyway that is it leave me a comment below bye guys